My name is Victoria Zhang. I graduated from the University of Pennsylvania and fenced with Premier Fencing Academy for 11 years. So my parents were the ones who suggested that I start fencing after we went to the 2008 Olympics and I watched fencing and I was like, that was cool. Uh, my dad said, oh, you know, there's a club nearby. Why don't we start you know, sending you to lessons there? And throughout my um, fencing experience, he's always there to push me to do better and also to review my uh, fencing tournaments with me. He'd take videos of every single bout I did at tournaments and then we would sit at home and watch them and review where I won, where I lost, things like that. So having someone who was so invested in my own uh, fencing career really helped me to understand what was at stake and how I should push myself to do better even when you know, I didn't feel like I was doing good or I wanted to do something else. Yeah, so I think having my parents support me and also take me to all those tournaments really made me feel like um, I was being invested in and fencing was something that I should be committed to. So the aspect of fencing that I find the most enjoyable is the potential for self-improvement. Through fencing, I've improved myself both physically as a fencer and also personally uh, through my self-confidence, my um, aggression, and also my drive to improve. So I think the best thing about fencing is that it pushes you to become a better athlete and also a better person because you see where your weaknesses are and also how to improve on them. And you have a lot of opportunities for us uh, understanding your strengths and then where you can improve and how to improve on, on them. So when I first started fencing, my first national tournament was in Reno, Nevada in 2012. Uh, that tournament, I lost all of my pull bouts and my first DE. But because of that experience, I developed this motivation to try and do better the next year. So the whole year I trained, I told myself I was going to try and make top eight the next year. So in 2013 in Anaheim, I competed in Y14. I placed third and ended up meddling with the bronze medal. And that was most memorable for me because I understood that if I worked hard and had a goal, I could you know, improve myself to a level where I could get the results I wanted. And from that point onwards, I think I really started to pursue a competitive career in fencing. I think the best way to stay motivated is to have a lot of short-term goals because you can have one big dream, but the only way to get there and uh, see that you're improving is to work on short-term goals. So say I'd be like, oh, you know, I need to be more aggressive in the middle, so I need to improve my um, middle game during the ready fence part of the bout. And so uh, just by setting, like, oh, on the, from the first step, I'm going to go small and fast. Then seeing how I improve, I think, and constantly getting feedback from myself, from my parents and my coaches, that's how you really like zone in on the process of improving yourself as a fencer. So definitely my favorite training is doing private lessons because I feel that uh, even with, if you want to become a better fencer, you need to have a really strong coach who gets you there. And so when I was growing up like, and training during the club, in the club, uh, having those private lessons twice a week really helped me to get feedback from my coach on where I need to improve and how to do that. And also gave me a lot of opportunities to practice in a controlled environment on uh, how to improve on those things. When I first started fencing, I was a really shy, like quiet kid who didn't want to get into any arguments or anything. So I'd always go backwards when I fenced. And that ended up being a problem for me because you can't win by always going backwards. So I think fencing taught me to have some more self-confidence and also like self-esteem, aggression when the situation calls for it, and also um, how to approach a um, bout or a conflict with what you want in mind without being personal about it. So I think the biggest thing fencing taught me was to have self-confidence, like self self-esteem, and how to handle um, intense situations while keeping my calm and knowing what I wanted. So my favorite place I visited was during the uh, 2015 World Cup in Konin, Poland. We were only there for like two or three days, but I really liked traveling abroad and seeing the different cultures and also you know, fencing against fencers from different countries. I thought it was a great opportunity to sort of shake up the, the regular routine of my high school life and see what was out there. I'll be attending USC Gold School of Law in the fall, which means that I'm um, interested in pursuing a career in criminal law. And so I just like to read some, you know, books on criminology and specifically biopsychosocial criminology which is how um, biological 
traits or um, hormones can predispose certain individuals towards aggressive behavior. So that was a really good class I took at Penn. And so I'm trying to do some more reading on my own to understand like, um, what causes criminal behavior, how we can address it, and how the justice system addresses that kind of thing. So I think uh, Setsi would be creative. I can tell that she has a lot of different ideas for directions on how to take the club, both as a coach and also as a club owner. And I really like how she's constantly innovating and looking for different ways to connect with people and with her own fencers and also with the parents of the club. Um, with Christian, I would say he's very focused. When he was training me in high school, I could tell he really wanted me to become a better fencer. And so during that time, I almost thought of him as like a, a second dad because he would push me constantly to become better at what I did. And even though he really drove me and like forced me, oh, like this is what you did wrong with this tournament. This is how you can improve it. I could tell he really wanted to make me a better person. And then for Christo, I would say he's very regimented. He really emphasizes the um, getting every move correctly and practicing until you do like the perfect lunge or the perfect parry. And I think that emphasis on really controlled movements um, is a very high level type of fencing. And it's something that I would constantly try to pick up on and do when I was younger. And I think it helped me moving more cleanly, helped me uh, think more clear clearly also. I think my mindset towards fencing would have been more comprehensive. I think when I was a teenager fencing at tournaments and going to NAX all the time, I always thought, oh, you know, this time I did poorly. You know, I feel terrible. I'm a terrible fencer because I lost. I think, um, but also I'd, you know, I'd lose sometimes, but also I'd win sometimes. So I ended up um, winning 12 national medals, and I think that's a pretty good achievement for a fencer. I think if I could go back and tell myself one thing, it would be that I shouldn't look at myself you know, based on individual instances, right? Who you are is determined by your patterns of what you do and how you succeed. So I think having that kind of more uh, relaxed, comprehensive mindset would have made me, um, I think, a more relaxed and happier fencer. So five years from now, I see myself having graduated from law school. My current plan is to work in criminal law as a prosecutor for the uh, state. So I'm thinking uh, in five years, I'd like to see myself as a district attorney for um, the federal court. Having a sibling who also does fencing actually helped in a really collaborative way because um, there were times when I wanted to practice something at home, uh, but um, Andrew, even though he was a boy, he was willing to help me train on those things. And actually, I think him being maybe like a little more powerful and aggressive helped me to train against more aggressive fencers. So in, on, in a like, more personal aspect, having someone who, who could share my feelings about fencing and tournaments and things like that, um, I think it just helped me to understand and sort of reconcile when I didn't do well, things like that. So it helped a lot. So my advice for, that I would give to young fencers is that um, you should constantly be practicing something specific in the club. So uh, what I did was I would go home and I'd watch all of my fencing videos from tournaments and I'd see, oh, you know, I um, kept hitting the same side, things like that. And then when I went to practice, I would try to address that specifically. So instead of just hitting to the same side, try like feints or like switching up where I hit or, um, you know, going straight. So I think the best way to improve is to see specifically where you're lacking in, and then to go and practice that every day uh, in the club. And that's how you have a lot of small, consistent improvements um, over a long period of time.